Hello, my name is Mike Smith. I'm the founder and uh, president of T&K Futures and Options. And I've created a few educational videos for people. The focus of today's educational video is the coffee market. But before we go ahead and get involved with that, let's talk about the risk involved. Uh, futures and options investing carries significant risk of loss and is not suitable for some people. Past performance is not indicative of future results and Use only risk capital when investing in markets uh, with this kind of risk, like futures and options. Okay, uh, over the 20 years or so that I've been um, a commodity trader, uh, I hear a lot of the same questions over and over again, and I really just want to answer those questions for you today, the, the, the most prevalent ones that I hear. Uh, the first one's always about futures and margin, just how that works out. Uh, so let's go ahead and cover that. Uh, I'm going to show you how to get long one July coffee futures, for instance. Uh, but let's talk about the, the contract specs first. Uh, coffee, coffee's a 37,500 pound contract. Every penny move is equal to $375, and its symbol is KC. And let's say you got along this July coffee, one July coffee, and these are hypothetical numbers, by the way, that's all made up. Um, let's just say you got long at 160. Okay, well this number is not made up. Actually, uh, I looked that one up today. That's the initial margin for coffee today. So uh, let's say you opened up a uh, account and had $50,000 in it and you got long that one coffee uh, position right there. Well, the initial margin is $6,050. So that money goes on the side. You know, that has to be in there. Even though the market hasn't moved for against you, that gets out of the equation. So you have $43,950 of available equity left over to get yourself another contract, potentially to um, get some options, you know, whatever it is you're looking to do. Um, that's what that other margin would be for. But okay, let's go ahead and go over a profit and loss scenario. You got in there, you're at 160. Um, the market goes up two cents. Well, you just had a good day. Uh, that's a $750 move to the good, so that's a profit for you. Conversely, let's say you got in there at 160, market came down uh, two cents. Well, you just lost yourself $750 for the day. Not so good. Uh, right here it says unlimited risk. Uh, that's theoretical, of course. No one's ever lost infinity. But let's say that you were short this market. There's actually no end, theoretically, to how high numbers can go uh, You know, for coffee. So that's why, theoretically, unlimited risk. Uh, to the downside, coffee can only go to zero. I doubt that's ever going to happen as well because I think coffee will always have some sort of intrinsic value, always have some value. But mathematically speaking, you know, that's how that could possibly work, theoretically. Okay, so this leads me to the very next question that I always get, and that is, how do you manage this uh, unlimited risk? Well, you're long this market, you don't want the market coming down, uh, you can put a sell stop in there to limit your risk. Uh, and in this case, I put 750-ish. So you're going to limit your risk to 750-ish. I'm going to explain the issue in a second. So let's say you get in there, it comes down 160, 159, you know, gets down to 158 and trades through that 158 level, which is where your sell stop is. It automatically turns into a market order market order gets filled at the next available price and that's where the ish comes in. Might be 158.05, might be 157.95, might be 158 right on the dot. Uh, you just don't know. Uh, it's the next available price so that's why I put the ish. If the market's extremely volatile, uh, that, that's called slippage. It can be higher or lower. If it's a low volatility market, you probably get right uh, what you want, which is where your stop loss is at 158. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's confusing, but that's how that works. All right, uh, next question I typically get, what's a call option? Well, a call gives the purchaser the right, but not the obligation to purchase the underlying futures contract for a specific time period, July, and a specific price, in this case, $1.62. Um, when it comes to actually purchasing your call, you're going to have to pay 
uh, premium for that uh, in the market. And this is hypothetical as well. Made this up. But let's say you wanted to buy that call right there, the 162 call, and it cost you five cents. Well, we just learned every penny is $375. So the cost of that option is $1,875 plus whatever your commission and fees are. So that's the cost of that. Let me give you a hypothetical example of making and losing money. Um, you know, with that one, if you get, uh, uh, let's say you go to 160 up to 162, okay, that's a $750 uh, move to the upside. Now, I didn't figure this out in my head, but you know, your option, if you got a 30% uh, delta factor, it's going to catch 30%-ish. <laughs> you know, of, the, of that move uh, in this case. So, you know, you, you're just going to be 30% of the 750. You're not going to catch the entire 750. And that changes as the market changes. So the, the delta factor constantly is moving up and down based on what the market itself is doing. There's other factors that get added into your options. Um, there's Vega. Vega is your implied volatility, which gets uh, added to or subtracted from the premium premium based on what's going on that day. Uh, theta, theta is your time decay. Um, so there's a lot of factors that get involved in, in pricing. Um, but delta factor is the one you care about on a day-to-day -day basis because uh, you know, you're only going to get 30% of that profit. The good news is you only get 30% of the loss if it comes to the downside, if you have a 30% delta factor there because it's going to move more slowly against you than it would in the futures market, just like it moves more slowly for you, like it did in the futures market. But the next question I typically get is, what is a put? Well, a put is just like a call. It gives the purchaser the right, but not the obligation to sell instead of buy. And that confuses people. Most people understand buying low and selling high, but they don't understand how you sell up here, buy back lower, and make the difference there too. But you can. And that's why I made these prices a little different too. Typically there's more demand for calls. So even though the 158 is two cents out and the 162 is two cents out, they're equidistant from at the money, which is 160. Uh, it's a little cheaper for the put. Uh, that's just based on demand. That actually, uh, you know, happens. Uh, the next question I typically get is what is your risk when you purchase an option? Well, whether it be a call or a put, uh, if you purchase it, your worst case scenario is you can lose whatever the premium you pay plus whatever your commissions and fees are. So you can't go negative. There's no margins, no margin requirements. Uh, your worst case scenario, finally, when you buy uh, an option. Uh, let's see here. Well, I think that just about covers everything I wanted to cover. Okay, well, I know the option part especially, you know, the, the futures is very cut and dry, you know, either win or lose, up and down, just do the math. But you have all these other, the Greeks involved in uh, uh, trying to figure out what an option's worth. Um, if you want to give me a call, you're probably on this website right now, tkfutures.com if you're watching this video, but maybe not. Uh, go to tkfutures.com. My name again is Mike Smith. I wrote a book. Uh, called The No-Nonsense Guide to Buying and Selling Options. Uh, as the title suggests, it's all about options. It doesn't cover the futures at all, but uh, it's educational. That might help you uh, learn more about these markets. But that's it. That concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.